Hi, and welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Southborough. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, but this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentation, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you identify with that, then this is the show that you wanna be watching. The goal of the show is to really speak to you folks about the people they need to know and the programs they need to know about if they just wanna spend the rest of their lives right here in Southboro. With me is my good friend, Doug Peck, uh, a Southboro resident for a long time, who <laughs> always finds these terrific guests um, and has two folks today that I think will be of real interest to a lot of you folks. So Doug, whom do we have today? Yeah, we have two guests, uh, Sam Stivers, who is a select person uh, in the town, and Bill Harrington, who is a, actually former chairperson of the South, Southboro Council on Aging, and now runs an interesting program called the Dull Men's uh, Club uh, in Southboro. So we're going to start with Sam. He has some very timely information uh, regarding um, your electricity rates. It, it turns out that Southboro is part of, I guess, a co-op. He can, he'll tell us further. And with the advent of National Grid saying they're going to raise their rates considerably, this is an interesting alternative that I wanted to share with the folks in Southboro. So, Sam, tell us a little bit about what's going on. Thanks, Doug and Arthur. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. <clears throat> um, as many of you may have noticed, uh, we got to notice uh, all the national grid uh, electricity customers in town, residential customers. Uh, a few weeks ago, got a notice from national grid that was a couple of pages of fairly dense text. But if you read closely, you would have seen that the proposal from national grid is to increase the price of their electricity from a little over 11 cents per kilowatt hour to about 33 cents per kilowatt hour, a huge increase in electricity prices. And the select board uh, is working to make sure that people are aware of that and are aware of an alternative that they have in town, available in town to uh, uh, mitigate the impact of that price increase. And so what I'd like to do is to briefly talk through uh, what's going on and what your choices may be. So um, essentially, again, as of 11-1, November 1st, which is a couple of weeks now, that price increase will take effect. But Southboro residents have an option to pay much less than the new 33, 34 cent per kilowatt hour rate by purchasing electricity through the Southboro Community Power Choice Program, which is an aggregator program that was put in place several years ago. And about two thirds of the town's residential electric customers now use that alternative program. And the current price of that electricity through the aggregation program is about 11 cents a kilowatt hour. And that rate is fixed through December of 2024. So it's a locked in rate for the next couple of years almost here. And again, it's something that people can join as they choose. Uh, you can join it and you can terminate it if for whatever reason you don't like it. But it's worth understanding a little bit more about what the structure is that we're, uh, that we're working with here. And I will emphasize that I, I am not the expert on this. Uh, there's more information, better information available on the Southboro Town website and through the Southboro Community Power Choice Program is the name of it. Uh, so I would urge you to check the website for more specific information there. But basically what's going on is National Grid uh, sends out monthly bills and they charge for two services. One is the use of their power distribution system, the wires, the poles, the transformers, et cetera. And second is the cost of the electricity itself. And for roughly the last 20 years, uh, pur pursuant to state law, people have had the option to actually buy the electricity from other pr providers than National Grid. Although for most of us, it's been most convenient to just buy both the distribution services and the, and the electricity from National Grid. But every residential user has the option to source from another source. And there are actually several out there. If you look around, you can find them. But for most of us, it was sort of business as usual for a long time. But every customer, residential customer, has to use and pay for the distribution system. There's no alternative to the wires. But Southboro uh, uh, Power Choice is one option, which many residents have chosen. And the question is, how do you tell who supplies your electricity? If you look at your national grid bill, there are two pages typically on the bill. The first page actually breaks down pricing for delivery in one column and electricity in the other column. 
And if you look at the back page or the second page of the bill, there's a label called supply services. And one of those choices would be national grid. But for example, on my bill, it says Southborough aggregation and lists a power company name from whom the aggregator buys the power. And the rates on that, again, are going to be about 11 cents per, per, per kilowatt hour, which is, again, real bargain relative to national grid. And even currently, national grid is charging about 14 cents per kilowatt hour. So the alternative is, is even cheaper now, and it's going to be a lot cheaper in a couple of weeks. So if you look on the town website, on the, on the website front page, if you want information about the Power Choice Program, one of the labels on the front page is uh, the, the menu bar is I want to. And if you click on the I want to, one of the choices under the apply column is Southborough Community Power Choice. And you click on that button and it takes you to the pay the web page for Southborough Community Power Choice, which has information about joining the, the uh, aggregator program and who to contact. And there's a 800 number, 833 number for the Southborough Community Power Choice customer server customer support consultants. And if you have questions and you'd like to speak with someone locally about this, you can contact the select board office at 508-485-0710. That's the main town number. And there are folks available to um, uh, speak with you there to answer questions or to refer you to the uh, community choice, power choice program consultants. So that's sort of the high level view of what's happening. And I've taken some informal surveys um, as, as Doug mentioned, Bill's role with the Dull Men's Club, I visited them recently, asked for a show of hands, and very few people were aware of this. And my guess is there are a lot of people in town who just don't pay much attention. And for those of you who at some point in the past have signed on to the Community Choice Power Program, um, you don't have to do anything. If you do nothing and you're already in that program, your rate will stay at the same 11.99 cents per kilowatt hour. But if you're buying electricity from National Grid, it's worth looking into. And clearly, this is not your whole power bill. Your, your distribution cost will remain essentially the same as it's been in the past. But the electricity cost is going to go up substantially if you're currently purchasing from National Grid. Yeah. So I would urge anyone to look at your bill, your National Grid bill, make sure you understand who is supplying your electricity. And if it is National Grid, I would urge you to look into the uh, Community Power Choice Program as a way to save a considerable amount of money. So that's sort of the high level view here. And again, be happy to answer any questions or Doug, Bill. Oh, no, thanks, um, Sam. That's that's very helpful. I was at the Dell Men's Group meeting and I was I, I didn't know about it either. And it's such a big savings. I thought it was really important that we try to get the word out to Southboro residents to, uh, to check this out. We're going to have some PowerPoint slides at the end of this that will show you exactly what to do. Uh, if you're not uh, you know, internet savvy, there's a phone number. If you can't find the phone number on the website, call the town offices and someone there will definitely direct you in the right direction, give you the phone number and you can call uh, and get the information for yourself. It's, a, it's an application that you fill out. It's not really very long. It's very helpful to have your national grid bill with you because they're going to ask you for your account number. So uh, I, would, I would make sure you have your, uh, your last bill uh, or any bill, as a matter of fact, you know, with you so you have the exact account number, the exact name, et cetera. Uh, and uh, you'll be able to do this in you know, 10 or 15 minutes and it's gonna save a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So I, go ahead, Arthur. I was just gonna say, this is, uh, Sam, this is the reason for this show. The, the reason <laughs> for the show is really to be dealing with exactly this kind of you know, information to a lot of, to, constituent, to constituents of yours, right? Right. Um, or especially seniors, because there isn't an easy way to find out about this stuff anymore, you know, because mm -hmm. the newspaper kind of evaporated. And, and for, for many folks of our generation who aren't crazy about spending time on the Internet, you know, they're just not going to pick this stuff up. Right. So it's really wonderful, Doug, that you're able to, to get Sam to come on. I just had two questions, you know, and I don't <clears throat> one, I, I'm listening to this it's, I'm saying to myself, who would not do this, right? So is there, <laughs> right. is there any, is there any downside from your perspective to doing this? And then just as a generic question, 
from National Grid's perspective, what is going on? What, why is there this gigantic increase in the, in the, in the, in the power source? Did, did, did something terrible happen at National Grid that suddenly they're really, really getting killed on their pricing? Uh, no, Art, good question. I'll take the second one first. Um, the, the issue is that uh, uh, National Grid, uh, as I understand it, doesn't generate a huge amount of electricity itself enough to cover all of its demand. So it has to buy electricity from other sources out there in the market. And in the wintertime, always, if you look at history, National Grid prices have gone up in the winter and um, they've been lower during the summer periods. And a lot of the electricity is generated from... Um, uh, petroleum-based uh, sources like natural gas and so forth. And given the situation in, in Europe and Ukraine these days, national gas, gas prices have spiked. So the cost of electricity has gone up substantially. National Grid is, and again, I'm not an expert, but my assumption is that National Grid is actually not making a lot of money on the electricity part of it because their costs have gone up substantially. And so, and frankly, National Grid is relatively indifferent about whether you buy it from them or buy it from an aggregator like we have. In fact, they their big investment is in the transmission and the wires and the distribution mm -hmm. system. So nice. they're, they're getting their return on assets on the pricing for that. So again, um, they have, for the last 20 plus years, this has been an option that most people have not taken advantage of because it's really not been necessary. So the goal, as you're suggesting, I think, is to avoid surprises here for people's electric bills if they know about this. Second piece is why wouldn't people do this? Um, again, most people have done it. Two thirds of, of Southboro residents have. But I think there's some natural concern, resistance that, hey, this is not what I'm used to doing. Is this some sort of a scam or a, a, a deal that's going to blow up in my face or whatever? And the answer is no. And that, um, um, again, you can sign up, uh, do it by either by web or phone, very easy. You can terminate it at any point that you want. Um, now, there are a few wrinkles around if you terminate it and then you try to re-enroll in it, uh, that may limit your ability to take advantage of the pricing. But most people make the change and stick with it because you wind up uh, in a good place overall if you, if you ride with it for a while. Yeah. So again, the reason I think is just fear, concern that maybe something's wrong with it. But I would assure you, again, a huge portion of the town is, is in the program and has been. I've been in it for several years. And um, I think it's a great deal. And I'm not aware of any significant downside to it. So I would urge people who are concerned about it to call the folks at the townhouse uh, and they can talk through the issues there and hopefully mm -hmm. provide assurance that people need to save some money with this. Yeah. And I have to say, you definitely don't come across as a scam artist. <laughs> so I, I think this, once again, this is a really good reason for yeah. the show is to, so that people can see like a real person, you, you know, saying, look, this is okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because you because you get so bombarded with all this stuff now. I, I've been accused of worse in my town. Government. <laughs> <laughs> we, thank, thank we locked you. in. We locked in at a very, you know, fortuitous time uh, to lock these rates in. Oh, and so, you know, people are right, saying that we have this deal. Yeah, I, I don't know how we got it, but it, it's great. And other towns have similar programs. I'm, I'm told nobody has one nearly as good as the one that we've got. So okay, yeah. we can take advantage of it. All right. Thank you, Sam. My pleasure. Thank you. Everybody follows up and saves some yeah. money. Thank you. Good. So I'm going to I'm going to switch over to my right here. On my right is uh, is Bill Harrington with uh, pictures of the Delman group, uh, you know, in, in, his, in the background there. So tell me, how long has this been going on now, Bill? You, you started this. Well, you didn't start. You started the program in Southboro. So give us just a quick history of the, the DMC. DMC actually started as a concept or as a name in, in New York at, the, at an athletic club. And these mm -hmm. gentlemen were sitting around the table talking and they were saying to them, each other, hey, we, we're in an athletic club, but we really don't play tennis. We don't golf. We don't play squash. We just sit here for the social aspect of this organization. And we're just a bunch of dull men. <laughs> that name kind of stuck with them. And what they, their model of a dull men's club is quite different from, from what has ultimately happened uh, here in the eastern Massachusetts and around. Um, their concept has ended up more as a, a casual uh, pub 
society or group. And it's basically running in, in England because that's where the, the guy that's really heading it up uh, spends most of his time. But what ultimately happened was well, there's a group in Pembroke, a small bereavement group who was meeting, who got to be good friends and got to be more than just a bereavement group. And they were just kind of looking for some, something to call themselves. And some, somebody stumbled on the idea of the Dalmens Club which has the logo, which you can see on the hats and on the, on the shirts that we're wearing. So they, they uh, took this dull men's club concept and developed it into what we use as a model as more of a coffee clutch for men. And they got together and they meet every week and they sit around the table and they, they talk about whatever and they uh, tell a few jokes. So I got wind of it. And a couple of us went down to a Pembroke meeting, saw what they did, and brought the idea back to the senior center. And uh, Pam Francis, the director, heard us and uh, kind of looked at us and like, saying, are you really serious about this? And we said, yes, we were. So she reluctantly said, well, go ahead and try it. So we put a little note in the newsletter saying we're going to start this dull men's club. We're going to meet on Friday mornings for an hour. And uh, we sent it out to a few people we thought might be interested. Well, for the first meeting, we had eight guys show up. And uh, we talked about what we were, what, what our concept was and were they interested. And, and so as, as time went on, the group has expanded and expanded. And so now we have about roughly 25 gentlemen, I use the term loosely, uh, attending our meetings and uh, they look forward to it. Yeah. So, so but the, the meetings are every Friday at 10 a.m. at the Senior Center. And you're right, we have a pretty big turnout of uh, 20 to 20, 20 as much as 30 uh, men. Yes. Uh, coming, and I have uh, I have about sixty men on the list. If we all if they all showed up, we'd really fill that ball up. <laughs> we usually have about we usually have, as Doug says, 20, 25, 30 men. Uh, and the the format of the meeting is we get together, we uh, uh, we have a a fifty fifty raffle which uh, it entails the men taking a dollar bill, putting their name on it, throwing it in the pot, and uh, we draw out a name, and that person whose name's drawn gets 50% of the pot, and the other 50% goes to the uh, South Grove Food Pantry. And over the last eight years, we have given over $1,000 to support the South Grove mm -hmm. Food Pantry. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing we do each meeting is we have a group called the Lunch Bunch, and we put a buck in the in the same pot, and we collect that money. And when we have enough money, we go out to we go out to lunch at a local restaurant and uh, just kind of uh, enjoy our camaraderie at a, at a restaurant. And we pay for it by putting a buck in the mm -hmm. pot each week, so that that works out quite well. So. Um, so the, the, the interesting thing about this group as it, it's grown, and it, it's quite surprising the, the people that, that, that join this group or attend this, these meetings. We have everything from a barber to a, to a scientist to, to uh, and, and all the yeah. walks of life uh, uh, guys here, and yet we all get together, we all talk about issues. Uh, we have fellows that have some very, very interesting hobbies, and they bring in uh, stories about or about their hobbies or demonstrations about their hobby. We have one fellow who is into tying knots, and mm -hmm. knots as you don't think, not like knots of the Boy Scouts, but really <laughs> serious, very complicated knots. And he gave a full demonstration, which was and very, very interesting. We have another fellow who's in archery, in archery and he brought his stuff in. We also have uh, occasionally at a meeting, we'll have local dignitaries like Sam 
come and, and address us and, and uh, we'll have this, this, somebody from the select board like Sam or we, we've had the fire chief, the police chief come and just uh, talk to us and let us uh, ask some questions. And, and it, it's, uh, it's yeah. really informative meetings sometimes. Uh, we do not discuss uh, uh, politics and we do not discuss religion and uh, that kind of uh, takes care of itself. Nobody uh, tries to break that, yeah. that yeah. barrier, uh, which keeps the meetings yeah. more cordial. We have one fellow that brings a few jokes every week, and he's always uh, sulking if we don't give him an opportunity to tell us a couple <laughs> of jokes. Uh, so it's a, it's a casual meeting, but it, it's a lot of fun and very, very interesting what these men have to say. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I it's find a... it interesting that some men will sit there for the whole meeting and never say a word. And other men, you have a little problem uh, having them to hush them up. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> and there's everything in between. Well, but, uh, uh, yeah. I, 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 I'm really concerned sometimes that the, some, some of the men come and they just sit there and I think, man, are they really having are they really having a good time are they but they're the ones that are the most regular and i if you talk to their wives they say you know what my husband looks forward to this meeting every every week this is the high point of his of his yeah. week and and you think wow that's interesting and the other thing that is is kind of interesting is occasionally you read we lose needless to say our age is uh is an issue and we, we lose a member once in a while and you read the old, old bit and it'll say he was a member of the Dull, South World Dull Men's Club and you think, wow, <laughs> that was a really important thing in their life. So yeah. this, this little casual group, uh, we have a great time, but we're also, I think, serving a real need for guys to get out and have a good time with other guys. Yeah. In South World. I, I think that underlines why there's two reasons why I wanted to, you know, highlight this. That's one of them. You know, after the pandemic, you know, people really hibernated and stayed in. Uh, we actually did a lot of Zoom uh, calls when we couldn't meet in person. But it's really important and unusual for for men's groups to be around like this. You know, when you, if you go to senior centers, for the most part, historically, it's been women's groups, Canasta, Mahjong, et cetera. So this is a this is the largest, I th one of the largest single groups, uh, you know, at the senior center is is the Dal Men. Uh, they just took a trip to to Mystic Seaport uh, earlier this year, uh, and you know the uh, it's not a lot of work for the senior center, but the senior center contributes uh, coffee and donuts every. Uh, every week, uh, as well as buses to take us to different to different venues. Uh, the other point I wanted to make, well, I wanted to, was that Bill brought this as an idea to the, to the, to the director and to the board. And I would encourage anybody, if you see something out there that you would, you know, that you, that you find very interesting and want to see if we could, you know, incorporate it into the senior center, by all means, feel free to do that. This is this is again one of the more successful ones that have started recently, and uh, it really is important to the to the folks who don't normally get out, who might be a little socially isolated, and don't have the social networks that they that they used to have, simply because work has stopped, uh, people that other friends have moved away. This is a very um, easy, casual way to meet new people and to meet new and very interesting folks. Mm -hmm. Doug, and if, if I could just, oh, I'm sorry, Sam. Go ahead, go ahead, Art. I, I, was, I was just going to say, so in our, in our house, when we were growing up, that's all you talked about was religion and politics. And those, <laughs> and those were very interesting topics, but, but I just read this piece, actually in the paper this morning as it happens mm -hmm. about the the amount of division among family members mm -hmm. that is happening now because of political arguments, because it's mm -hmm. so contentious. So the notion of, of actually having a place, which is kind of a respite from that, 
mm-hmm. and it is really a wonderful thing. A lot of it those is. folks may be coming just saying, oh my God, it's so wonderful to have a group of people and we're not talking about especially politics. I mean, right. personally, I like politics, but it's like, oh my God, you know, you can get so wound up about it. Mm-hmm. So it just, it just sounds, it's just wonderful. And, 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 and that's all. I just wanted to make that observation. <laughs> so could I, could I add a comment as well? Sure. sure, sure. Um, um, I, I make it to the dull men's club uh, periodically. Unfortunately, my day job schedule conflicts with that <laughs> as quickly as I can. And as an extraordinarily well-qualified member of the dull men's club, I want to stay in touch with my, my colleagues there, but uh, I think it's a remarkable group. And I am constantly impressed at the uh, uh, life experience of folks mm-hmm. in that room. Um, some amazing stories of people who have traveled the world, who have been present at major world events over the last 50 plus years. Um, people pop up with comments about, well, when I met King so-and-so or President so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's a huge amount of experience in that room that I find incredibly interesting. So I hear yeah. things every time I go there that uh, is entertaining and, and uh, inspiring and uh, uh, winds up in tiny little Southboro here. You, you think <laughs> that, that, that kind of experience. Yeah. I find, I find the same thing. And it's very the impressive. The conversation goes from one thing to the next. And you, one minute you're talking about spaceships, and the next minute you're talking about uh, electricity in the town. And, and it just goes the gamut. Uh, or butterflies or bird watching or you name yeah. it. Yeah. All over the map. So very, very inter- entertaining group. So I would encourage yeah. folks to check I'd it out. I'd like to know. say that since we have started our Dull Men's Club, the Northboro picked up at their senior center. They now have a dull men's club that is <laughs> comparable in size to ours. But they're not nearly as dull as we are. <laughs> <laughs> that's had to be. Uh, there's also one in Andover. There's one in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, and one of the things we do annually is we have a barbecue for all the, all the clubs in the area. We get together at one of the senior centers usually either yeah. Howard's or Northboro. And and we have we have fifty, sixty guys that show up from the different different clubs in the area. We just have a good old time bottom yeah. and, and jarring with each jarring with each other. Uh, yeah. so it's be, it's becoming more and more a, a a good idea for senior center to let the guys get out and just casually meet each other and yeah. comfortably enjoy each other's company. So uh, uh, the reason I love doing this show is Doug always does this. <laughs> Doug always brings these like great people. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, this is so interesting. And so, g- gentlemen, my, my job on the show really, as you've noticed, is I really don't participate much. I just provide comic relief, but I also <laughs> keep time. Mm-hmm. And as a result of this, we, we run out of t- all this. Yeah. Is, we run out of time. So, I, Doug, I really, really want to appreciate, you know, I want to thank you again for being willing to do this. I, right? Yeah. And Bill, this was just really a wonderful, a wonderful, very undull presentation. Regarding <laughs> dull men. And Sam it was just really a pleasure. And I think that this information is so timely and valuable to so many people, just as a practical matter. You know, the, you know, the bottom line is sometimes you got to kind of get get out, you know, get over the fact that you've always done something one way. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. It's costing you a lot of money to do that, right? Yeah. So you got to look at this alternative. Look at this alternative. Yeah. So thank yeah. you very much, Sam. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Doug. And thank you for the, to the folks at, uh, at South Grove Cable, at, at Sam, for uh, will, being willing to do this show. And we'll look forward to seeing you next month on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in South Grove. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Yeah.